saying it all in the sanctuary. And turn to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. And as you turn it into your Bibles, I want to thank all of our ministries who have served so faithfully today. Our choir, our ushers, our trustee, our, our trustees and deacons, the music ministry, those who serve on the cameras, turn on the lights, unlock the doors. I thank you all for your service and your ministry on this morning. Amen. Matthew chapter 16, beginning at verse number 13. If you haven't said amen, amen. We need a little bit more time to hold on. Hold on. Amen. Book of Matthew, first book of the New Testament. Amen. All right. First book of the New Testament. Yeah. Matthew. Oh, yeah. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 19. I also like to thank my co laborers in the gospel, Amen. my wife and family who are here this morning as well. Amen. Amen. I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible, the word of the Lord reads like this. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, mm -hmm. he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I am? <laughs> so they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, mm -hmm. or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Come on. Come on. Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, yes. the Son of the living God. Uh -huh. Jesus answered and said, Blessed are you Simon by Jonah? Yes. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Yes. And I also say that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades or the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Right. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, right. and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, yes. and whatever you loose on earth will be loose yeah. in heaven. Let right. us pray. But I believe what I've already said about you. Right. I cannot do this without you. Yes, I need your anointing that makes preaching easy. Yes. I need your power, Lord, Heavenly Father, so that you may be lifted up when someone may ask the question, what must I do to be saved? Yes, Father, I thank you for being my God. I thank, thank you for your calling on my life, Lord, Heavenly Father. I do not take it for granted. Yes, so, Lord, Heavenly Father, I ask that you do what you do best, and that's just be God. Yeah, yeah. Help us to move out of the way, Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord. And we ask that you will reign supreme in this place, Lord. That you will search hard, that you will go from heart to heart and from breast to breast. Search our our needs, Lord, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. And we ask that you will meet all of those needs, even on this day. Yes, yes. Lord, Heavenly Father, we ask, Lord, that you will just remove every distraction out of this church today, Lord, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, 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 so that the word may fall on good ground in our lives, so that it will bring forth good fruit and due season. And Satan, we declare you are a liar and a deceiver. You have no power, control, or authority over anything that takes place during this time of sharing. We thank you in advance for the victory that we'll pray, Lord, Heavenly Father, as you speak through us. It's in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, that we pray. And all those who love God, say amen. 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 Blessed are you, Simon, by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on my, this rock I will build my church, All right. and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I'd like to take it as a title for this time of sharing the gates of hell. To fully understand what Jesus is talking about in this text, there's some fundamental truths that we must first agree upon. Mm -hmm. But Jesus is not speaking in metaphors or hyperboles. Neither is he talking about philosophical or theoretical concepts. But Jesus at that time is speaking prophetically about present day reality. Mm -hmm. What then are the truths that must be agreed upon in order to grasp the borders of this statement? Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The first is that there is a God. Proverbs 9 and 10 teaches us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. All right. Psalms 14 and 1 teaches us that only a fool would say in his heart that there is no God. All right. In other words, we must come to an understanding and a realization that God is real, and that God exists. All right, all right. 
Next, we must also come to the understanding that in the same way that there is a God who is the epitome of everything good, there's also the devil, yeah. Satan, or Lucifer, who is the embodiment of everything that is evil. Satan, according to Isaiah 14, was once responsible for leading praise and worship of God. And was kicked out of heaven yeah. for leading a rebellion against the God that we serve. All Jesus right. says in Luke that he saw Satan falling like lightning as he was banished to earth from heaven. All right. Next, we must also believe in the presence of angels who serve in varying roles throughout the Bible. Mm -hmm. There's some angels whose primary role is to sit around the throne and cry, Holy, yeah. Holy, yeah. Holy, yeah. Lord God Almighty. Mm -hmm. Some who serve with Gabriel as messengers for God throughout the world, and some who serve with Michael to fight daily for the kingdom of God to halt the advances of the enemy. And finally, this last truth that we must all agree upon is that if we believe that there is God, all right. if we believe that there is a devil, all right. if we believe in the presence of angels, we must also believe in the existence of demons all right. who serve at the pleasure of Satan for the destruction of mankind. Right. The book of Revelation teaches us that when Satan fell, he took a third of all the angels with him oh, yeah. to fall to earth. Yeah. All right. We have to start here because when Jesus says, on this rock, I will build my church, All right. and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. There, are, these are the unspoken but primary characters that are found tucked in between the lines of this text. All right. For this statement is about so much more than just the establishment of the church of Jesus Christ. All right. But Jesus is reflecting the one and warning us about the battle between good and evil that will take place for the souls of humanity. All right. So the question that then arises is, how or why did humans become casualties in a cosmic battle between God and Satan? It could be said that as a crown jewel of God's creation, the devil seeks to make us fall out of the presence of God with the same speed and certainty in which he himself fell. Satan was not just satisfied to take a third of all the angels with him, but relentlessly works to take all of humanity down with him as a form of open defiance and continual rebellion against God. Yeah. It could be said that every time humans open their mouth and praise and worship of God, it reminds the devil of the goal he once had all right. as God's primary minister of music. Oh, yeah. And so every time we worship God, it angers him because of the position that he lost. Oh, yeah. It could be said that the devil hates all who are aligned with the one who handed him his worst defeat. Because when he looks at us, he sees God. And God defeated him, and it upsets him every time. All right. Regardless of the reason, the devil seeks to devour us as God's prize and possessions. All right. In fact, the truth of the matter is, is this. The greater the impact that you can have the potential to have yeah. on the lives of the people of God. Right. You must understand the greater the demonic attack will be yeah. in your life. Right. And God allows these attacks right. because as his prized peoples, God trusts that you will do yeah. the right thing. Yeah. Right. God trusts that you will not embarrass him when he brings you forth in front of the judge. Be 
destroyed. The problem is the ecclesia, those who have been called out as the body of baptized believers, the form we now consider to be the church, have been duped into believing that we no longer have to fulfill the mandate to fight. Come on. We get excited about joining the body of Christ. We get the preacher out here.
by having our preachers preach a word and tell gospel that feels good but never empowers anyone to change. Because the Bible says there will come a time when men will not put up a sound doctrine and start to suit their own desires. They will gather around a great number of teachers to say when their itching ears desire to hear. They will turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside to this. Come on, preacher. But can you still 